Well, John uh, created the ability um, to, uh, in his experiments of transferring nuclear material from one cell to another, to uh, really recreate a primitive type of cell um, that would um, develop into a, a whole animal. Uh, when you do this nuclear transplantation experiment, uh, the uh, activity of the genes is completely changed. It's, they're made to go back to the beginning of life again. You can take something like adult skin and derive from it embryo cells, make them, as it were, go backwards towards being an embryo again. And when you've done that, you've got your skin-derived embryo cells you can make them go off in different directions to form things like heart, brain, eye, and so on. You see a kidney or a liver has multiple different kinds of cells in there, and you can't, uh, all, uh, they're all arranged in a particular way. To make a replacement liver or kidney or heart would be very complicated, but to make replacement parts of organs, like parts of the eye or even parts of the brain, would not be so difficult. So I think the future lies in uh, providing um, spare parts of an organ, not the whole thing. You can give people back their own kind of cells. You may have heard of immunosuppression. If, if you gave me some of your skin, it would be rejected unless I was immunosuppressed. And you don't want to be immunosuppressed because it um, means you're no longer protected from disease and infection. So to get replacement cells without immunosuppression would, I think, be a huge step forward. When I started my graduate work right at the beginning of my career, I was supported by an MRC, so-called studentship, that's to say supporting the graduate work. And that kept me going for three years, may even have been four. Uh, when much of this work that's now recognized was done.